Afraid of the coronavirus but can't get an N95 mask? Try these DIY mask hacks. A ninja mask. Safety first. Bubble wrap. Staple a plate to your face. Don't spoon with corona. Caution. Stay away, corona. Aluminum foil for fun shapes and styles. And the CIA. And, uh, whatever this is. Let me introduce myself. I'm Ethan Minsker. I make films, I write books, and I make art. This is my artwork during a pandemic. Coronavirus, COVID-19 outbreak of 2020. The city has been completely self-isolating. A lot of people have left the city. And now you can walk around and it's like the vacant city that you see in all of those sort of zombie end of times movies, but for real. frustrated and there's going to always be a reaction to every action everything was being boarded up and the city was becoming ugly I take a photo of my artwork clean it up in Photoshop print it out on a large-scale black and white printer and then I recolor and paint those elements that I want to bring out I use industrial wallpaper adhesive and plaster it up wherever I find a vacant space. The Spaceman I made out of Sculpey. I'm always going to try to experiment. And for this piece, I built a figure and then took photos of that figure and pasted those up. Let's bring back animals to the Lower East Side. Hide them in places in plain sight. So somebody might walk down the street and look at the corner of their eye and see a dog or see a raccoon and bring them a little bit of joy. And anything is better than seeing plywood everywhere. You feel isolated. Putting out the street art is a way for me to reach out to the public and make me feel more a part of the community and not a passive participant. The nature of street art is that it's not permanent. And in that impermanence is its beauty. You get to see something for a moment, maybe a week, maybe a day, and then it slowly decays or is taken down by other artists. That is part of the thrill. Getting it up, seeing it come down. I'm going to give you a little bit of tour of my studio during this coronavirus quarantine lockdown. The concept is, is that I want to build an entire city in the way I remember it, almost like a dreamlike landscape of the locations that have most affected me. I think our memory is connected to the locations that we inhabited. This is part of a larger art project. I love you, New York, but you're bringing me down. Based on the LCD sound system song, New York, I love you, but you're bringing me down. Like a rat in a cage, pulling minimum wage. New York, I love you, but you're bringing me down. 
And if you listen to the lyrics, it's kind of one of those things where it's like this love for New York, but how it's always changing. And in New York, ever since I moved here in 1988, there's always been this sentiment of like, oh, I miss the old New York, as if whoever got there, they remember it when they first got there, as if that was the best New York would ever be. And it just continuously gets worse from there, even though it's progressing and the buildings are getting bigger. I live in downtown Manhattan in the East Village, and all you see is these glass buildings coming up all around you, so I somewhat feel the same thing. Because this project was made during the pandemic, I wanted to recreate this part of the city where it was like a busy, crowded street and a busy, crowded subway. So I asked people to send photos of themselves, a photo of themselves walking down the street and a photo of themselves standing in the subway. And I got a pretty good response. People from around the world were sending me pictures and I'll keep adding more photos as people send them to me until I really have no more space on the sidewalk. I think New York is not just the buildings. It's not just the subway or the transportation. It's made up of the people in the city. And that diverse group is what makes New York beautiful. Cardboard boxes, oatmeal containers, plastic bottles, soda bottles. It's a bunch of stuff that I'm saving from the trash, keeping it out of the landfill and making art into it. What do you think about this art project? It's okay, mommy says she hates it. What do you think about it? I think we could save it until it's a lot of money and then we could get a lot of money from it by selling it. You think somebody's going to pay a lot of money for this art project? Yes, because it may be in the future, it may be like very expensive. We could sell all of this and then we get a lot of money. I don't know, that's just an idea, it may not. You may become famous and you may not. That's my art dealer. think it's good that I'm recycling materials? Kind tell me. Of. We'll say. Tell kind me. of, but you could also just give it to someone else to recycle in the recycling bin. What do you call this art project? Um, very big, big art that fills up the house. plan was to exhibit this at the gallery within two years, but now because of this whole COVID thing, that's all in flux. So I really hope I get to show this in the larger scale with all of the buildings to the public soon. small element aspect of the larger project. New York, I love you, but you're bringing me down. As I've been walking around, I've been noticing these trucks that have been co-opted and covered in graffiti. Now, I think these things are beautiful, rare sort of examples of something that continuously changes. People change it and cover it up. So I wanted to capture these elements and document them as part of the larger project of New York in my memories. It's sort of like capturing a wild animal, a rare wild animal, out in its natural habitat. Now some of these things are divided into like buildings and water towers 
and the kind of iconography that makes me think of New York, whether it's a subway train, a New York taxi cab, a mailbox, you know, that's covered in graffiti. In my space where I currently work is my own apartment. I have an office space, but mostly I work on the little child's table that belongs to my daughter that she so graciously lets me borrow. The only issue I've had has been with storage. So it's like quarantine, there's three of us stuck in this house, it hasn't been a lot of space. I've been moving an entire boatload of buildings over to my mother's apartment on the west side, utilizing her spare room that we have there. I take a little hand truck and I cart each building. It's taken me about two weeks to get everything over there. And her apartment is now filling up. <laughs> you are using my blues room as a storage room because uh, your artwork has completely taken over your apartment and you're quarantined or you're locked down during the coronavirus. So your artwork was taking over your apartment, so now it's taking over my apartment. How do you like that? I like it. Makes me feel like I'm in the middle of downtown New York or old New York. So I like it. If I want to go for a trip, I just open the door and there I am. I think during these times, you got to stay positive, even though there's a lot of horrible stuff happening out there. And for me, it's one of those times where I'm just going to you know, focus on what I'm doing creatively and try to really put a, a larger effort into that. There's this dream that every creative has is that I wish I had enough time to do all the projects that I have planned. And this is one of those things where be careful what you wish for because you might actually get it. I'm not going to waste my time. I'm going to do as much as I possibly can in this time period before things go back to normal, whenever that is. I find inspiration in the strangest places. One time I was visiting a friend's and early in the morning I looked out the window and I saw a fox cutting across the lawn. Ever since then I've been affected by that. What the hell was that fox doing? It was a suburban neighborhood. I've always used paper mache because paper is something that you can access everywhere. I can take paper that could end up in the trash and recycle it into art or upcycle it into art. The paste I use is a industrial wallpaper adhesive, the super clear coat, but it's all natural and doesn't seem to affect my hands. We'll see later, maybe I'll end up with some horrible disease from it. I start with a cardboard skeleton that I cover in strips of white paper making it easier to paint. That's the magic of paper mache. Anything I dream up, I can make. I like foxes because they're sneaky little bastards. They're always out there ready to steal your chicken and get away with it. I think hunting them is a horrible thing. I feel like if I had a spirit animal, maybe it would be a fox. I like to have art projects that are mobile, that I can take with me when I'm biking around the city. Lately, I've been working on unicorns or also people in masks. A lot of people think paper mache is just for kids. Well, I'm a full grown adult who loves paper mache. You can't take away my crafty hand, do it yourself mentality. If I see it, I think it, I dream it, I make it. And I don't care what the repercussions are. You can laugh at me, fine. There's no limitations when you're doing contemporary art. Whatever the medium, format, whether it's paper mache, crayons, it's all okay.
My mother once took me to Philadelphia where there is a battleship called the Olympia that sits there on the river. It's part of the White Fleet, which were the very early steam battleships. Very beautiful, they were like war machines and dreadnoughts, but they were also beautiful works of art, inlaid with gold and white paint, something that you definitely would be able to spot on the open seas. I became fascinated with it and always built variations of these same ships. The one I'm working on now is the USS Connecticut. This is a series I'm doing called French Bulldog. Because I do a lot of these zines and I do sketches, I focused on one of them, the French Bulldog, and I decided to make a series and see how the variations of paint could play across this puppy's face. I first make a clay mold, then I cover it with paper mache. When the paper mache is dry, I pry it off. What do you think of my dog heads? They're weird-ish. Do you like them? Kind of. What kind of dog do you think you want? Um, the Australian sheepdog. What about a corgi? Yes. I say no to both those dogs. What? You, you like Australian sheepdog? I do. I'm using Posco markers and gouache acrylic paints. They're made as individual wall hangings that can hang from a tack. Depending on the paint scheme, it might look like a bunny or a cat. What do you think I should do with the dog heads? Make a body and then maybe you could, and maybe people will compliment it and then maybe and people may um, not dislike it like mommy um, and then people may fart on it. That's Blue, my art dealer. You make too much art. <laughs> do you ever take a break? In the last year I've been doing these mini zines. This is what I would call a mini zine. They're one page folded little fanzines. Each one of these is eight pages. Stool pigeons, because I think, uh, you know, pigeons in New York. If you love New York, then you should love its pigeons. These are all drawn by me. I use some markers. Now, the cool thing about this is that they all are made from one sheet of paper. I call this the square donut. So you can do this at home. You can take a square sheet of paper, a regular sheet of paper, right? You fold it this way. You fold it that way. And that with a little slit right in the middle makes a square donut. And uh, then you just put it on a copy machine and you replicate it. The next series I've been working on is called New York Mares. Anyone who lives in New York, you have this thing of no matter who the mayor is at the time, 50% of the city hates you, no matter what. So you can't win if you're a mayor. You think you get elected, automatically half the city hates you. This thing that every creative and artist dreams about, and it's, I could have all the time in the world if I could just sit home and work on my projects. Well, now with this quarantine thing, you're kind of forced into that, and then it's be careful what you wish for. After a while, you find, you know, like maybe you just rather sit there and get depressed and watch TV. Don't do that. There's a lot of projects you can do in your home without finding resources outside. Really try to use the limitations of the materials that you have on hand. It's, it's not a time just to give up. You can be creative at home. The worst thing you can do is just sit home and like watch the news all day. And then that's just going to make you crazy. We will get through this. This will be over. So you hope that on the other side of this, you're not looking back and going like, wow, I really squandered, you know, this time. Poop song. Good old play to poop. Yeah. Good old play to poop. Yeah. Good old play to poop. Yeah. Good old play to poop. It's steamy hot. Yeah. Steamy hot poop. Yeah. Good
good old poop. Sing it. While you were gone, I wrote you this song.